All right, welcome to the Tuesday webinar. Uh, I've got something I want to share with you today in the profit dial setup. Uh, we're going to build a call flow, and this is a really effective call flow for use in direct mail campaigns or any high volume marketing campaign where you're going to be generating a lot of callbacks. You actually want to create a couple of steps in your call flow so you can actually filter out and route those calls appropriately and kind of automate some of the legwork in terms of responding to those calls. And so um, I highly recommend, you know, using something called lucid chart, um, this opportunity to build out your, um, so you can build out your, your call flow in the form of a flow chart. Um, so lucid chart is a really great tool for, for organizing your call flows and actually just diagramming them before you come into REI solutions and building it. And so I just wanted to kind of highlight that and um, actually have a, flow chart here in my system so here we go profit dial flow direct mail okay so now this looks a little intimidating right there's all these boxes and you know what is all this and, and you can actually you know if you, if you take your time you'll actually be able to create flows just like this and this is kind of representing the call flow that we're going to build in the system and you know you may or may not have flows this um complex you know and you may have flows that are more complex um but again this this um it's a great way to build out a, a flow chart and create a, a PDF then that you can share with your team. Um, you know, and just you'll have this then to make notes and evolve it as you go. And um, again, you may not have all these different steps, but this is essentially the flow chart, uh, the call flow that we're going to build today in the, the webinar here. And um, it's a direct mail flow, or it can be used for other campaigns, but I use it for direct mail for my postcard campaign. And um, we're going to build it out to recognize you know, first time callers and repeat callers. We're gonna sort those and we're gonna route them to a greeting and then we'll sort through the ones that leave a message versus the, one, the ones that hang up. And we'll actually identify those repeat callers and steer them down a, a live answer flow. And, uh, and so this is kind of what we're about to build here. And you know, this flow chart again will make more sense as we go in, in um, creating it in, in profit battle, all right? And so, in the system here, what we'll do is we'll come to um, system settings. And if you just go to your system settings right here, it'll open up your numbers and you'll see you've got you know, opportunity to create tags and sources and you can add your keywords and your recordings. And so a lot of your um, you know, customizing will be done here in the system settings. Um, what we wanna do is create a call flow and we're gonna create a new call flow here and we'll call it our um, direct mail um, flow with live answer. Okay. And we can go ahead and save it as we go. So as you're developing your flow here and adding steps, you wanna save it as you go. Um, so right off the top here, you see we've got all these different options, different steps we could add to the flow, right? And if you're just very simply creating a flow that you want to route to, you know, your cell, you can create a forwarding here. And then maybe you just want to add a, a tag or you want to make a note uh, on the source, right? What, what marketing campaign it came in on. And so all of these elements would be useful, the tags, the source, the forwarding, um, a voicemail greeting, if you want to route them to, to a recorded message, you can do that. Um, you can add some smart routing at the top. And this is actually what we're going to do here. We're going to add branches here at the top. So we'll call it a uh, first time caller direct mail. You can label the branch. And we're going to now create a filter for this branch of the label. And again, we can identify first time callers. So this is one of the filters that's now applied to this. And we can create a second branch for repeat caller repeat caller direct mail and so you can use you know whatever naming convention you want on the label um, but we're going to call it repeat caller and we're going to add our filter here for the second branch and those are repeat callers there and so the very top of the flow we're separating our first time callers and our repeat callers and the reason we're doing that is because we want to we want to route the first time callers to a greeting and we're going to have them go to, to a voicemail recorded message. And then if they call back, like if they, you know, were prompted to call back in some way, we want to route them to a live answer. So they would be a repeat caller then, and we want to route them to a, a, 
a live responder. And the reason is there, we don't want repeat callers getting the same exact greeting that they got the first time. It's a little bit more, more nuanced response and, and obviously a sign um, of motivation when they're a repeat caller. So we want to get them into, a hand, into the hands of a, a live responder. We want to have that live engagement with that caller. Um, so this is you know, an example of what the first step might be if you want to create that kind of nuanced, smart routing at the top of the call flow. And at this point, we can actually um, include a source. So maybe we want to have the direct mail um, identify the contact record as, as a direct mail lead. And then we want to um, probably tag it. Maybe we want to tag it as a direct mail lead so we can actually sort through those tags and we can grab that group for um, email or blast of a text message, whatever we want. Um, now at this point, we, we want to get them to, the first time callers, we want to get them to the greeting. So let's go ahead and add our voicemail here. You can see it, it can read a message sort of in that, in the robot voice, or you can upload a recording. And so you'll for sure want to have a, a recording of some kind uploaded and available. Again, the recordings can be uploaded in the system settings. And once that's uploaded there, it'll be available here in, in the uh, drop down here. Be selected as a voicemail greeting, right? Now here we want to actually add another branch because once they've come to the greeting, uh, and they're listening to the recording, one of two things is gonna happen. Either they're gonna get to the end of the recording and they're gonna leave a message with the information. They're gonna, they're gonna uh, hear the call to action in the greeting and they'll say, okay, well, I leave my name and number and information about the property. Or the you know, alternative is that they're gonna hang up, right? And so if we add branching here, we can actually separate those that leave a voicemail from those that don't. And we can actually initiate a, an automated response or an appropriate notification. Or, or a task if, if that's uh, appropriate. And so in the case of those that do leave the voicemail, that's again a great sign of motivation. They, they heard the call to action, they left their, their information and they're looking for a callback, they're, they want service. So if they've left a voicemail, that's great. You would wanna have a notification of that. And so let's go ahead and insert our notification here. And we can say, um, let's see, I actually have some Cut and paste notifications here. Let's see. So if they if they leave a voicemail, here's an, an example of a notification you could get. Right. So direct mail lead left message. Check profit dial for voicemail and call back ASAP. Complete contact record and select workflow for to assign autoresponders and or tasks. Right. So you're gonna call them back ASAP. That's the the prompt for you to to know that their voicemail was left and you should call them back. And you can get this. Um, notification by text. If you want to put your number in there, your cell number, you get it, it texted right to you. That's a really great option. Or uh, the email notification. And so if you want to just get an email, um, you can do that. Right? Now what I like to do in, a, in conjunction with the notification that comes to an email or a text or both, I like to have a task set up. And so this task will be added to the global task list up here, and you'll be able to track right, the tasks, the callbacks, the, the um, primary to-dos, and you'll be able to know what's getting done, when the due date is, and you know, what the task type was. And so as an example here, um, here's an example of what I might put in the task field here, right? There's the details of it. Um, callback seller lead is the title. And you know that it's assigned to your sales associate. You can specify type of task, right? So it's going right to that team member, make it a high priority, and you know, make it an immediate due date in the, you know, in the sense of uh, wanting to get back right to that seller right away. Um, so that's pretty good one, two step after they've left a voicemail. Because you know, they've listened to the voicemail, they left a message, you're notified to call them back and engage them and to figure out how you can provide some service to them, set the appointment, close the deal, whatever it may be, right? And now if there's no voicemail, well, we'll what we wanna do is we wanna probably tag them for a long-term follow-up. You know, we've covered the no lead left behind tag and how useful that is for rolling your suspects or your, your, you know, your tire kickers or you know, any of your, your not so hot leads into this bucket so that you can 
you grab it and blast them on occasion. The first of the month, you can send a text. The 15th of the month, you can send a ring this voicemail. So this no lead left behind tag is great for all of your suspect seller leads. And we're automating the application of that tag to all those that called but didn't leave a voicemail. In addition to that, you can automate, say you want to, three minutes later, you want to send a text message. And here's an example of, and here's an example of a text message that you might, might do, right? So here's a text reply that goes out automatically. Um, text reply goes out automatically three minutes later after they hang up, right? Which is awesome. And then it'll prompt them to call back, right? And you can even you know, do it, back it up with a, a ringless voicemail. So we want to send out a uh, ringless voicemail the next day. And hey, you know, sorry, I missed your call. You say, I saw your number in my system. Didn't want you to fall through the cracks. I got this all cash offer. Just want to make sure I got the right address. Uh, give me a call back, right? So the, the call to action is call me back. Call me back anytime. You know, call me back. I've got the all cash offer ready for you. Right? And you can automate those, right? That text and that ringless voicemail to all of those people that just called and hung up. And if they do, you know, um, take the, the call to action or if they hear this ringless voicemail and they're prompted to call back, well, at that time, they're going to be a repeat caller, right? And our smart routing at the top of the call flow is going to identify them as a repeat caller, right? So once this, you know, one, and at that point you want to forward to your, um, you can actually tag it as a, a repeat caller. Um, let's see. Repeat caller, right? If you've got a tag available. And then you can even, you know, forward it to your, your cell number. Right? You want to show the profit dial number called so you can have that programmed into your contacts and you'll display it on the caller ID. So you'll know. It's like, oh, it's, it's direct mail line. Go time because they're calling back. It's a repeat caller because it's being forwarded to me live. You know, you know if it's being routed to your um, phone from the call flow here that that it's a repeat caller. So that's somebody that's calling back. They heard your ringless voicemail and got your text and they're calling back. They really want to talk to you. And so you can actually you know specify ten or fifteen seconds and you can even forward it to your partner. You know, maybe your partner is available and they want to. Um, you know, program the numbers in their phone as well. You know, or maybe you've got a third party service that's your secondary responder, your backup responder. Or maybe you've got, you know, an alternative short greeting. It's a little bit different, right? Maybe you've got a, a you know, a short greeting. Like, hey, sorry, I missed you again. You know, I really important that we talk. Um, what time is best to call you back? Something like that. Um, so I, I really like this call flow. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this right now. And let's go ahead and take a look real quick from top to bottom. Very top, we've got smart routing, right? Because you're going to differentiate the first-time callers and the repeat callers because we want two different things to happen. First-time callers are going to go to the greeting. You know, they get tagged with the source and, the, you know, um, the tag itself. And then they get to the voicemail greeting. And here we've got a branch for those that leave a voicemail, sign a motivation. You can call them right back. You get notified to to listen to the voicemail in, in the profit dial inbox and, and call them right back. If they don't leave a voicemail, it's fine. You've captured their number, you've tagged the contact record so that you can roll it into a long-term follow-up, and you've automated your first couple of um, callbacks or your, your text back and your in voicemail. So you've automated your first couple of uh, replies to them so that if they're, you know, if they were calling angry or they were calling, you know, because they were confused or whatever, you can clarify some things with this automated uh, follow-up and prompt them to call back because the, the more interested and motivated uh, sellers or, or callers will, will call back. And so you're kind of letting the, the cream rise to the top there. You're letting them show their motivation through these filters, right? And so branch two, if they do call back, that's great. You get, they get tagged as such and they get forwarded to you you get to reply right away or, you know, respond, answer right away or, or forward to your backup responder, right? So that's a really good call flow. Once you've created it once, it's in place and, you know, you don't have to recreate it, you know, over and over. And it's, it's a really strong call flow that you can use for a variety of um, 
of lines. And so if we had, say, a number now that we wanted to apply it to, say we want to come in and switch out our direct mail from the greeting to the, the live or, or the, the branched flow, you know, maybe we want to name it branch flow, uh, direct mail branched flow, something like that. But we're going to save that there. Now you see we've got our new flow that we created, and it's, it's configured and attached to our direct mail line. And so we know that you know, when we go out and market this number, anybody that calls, it's going to be rooted deep down our new call flow. All right. So um, I hope that helps. I'm going to keep it at that for now. Um, watch it again if you need. Let me know if you have questions. Um, you know, play around with it. There's a whole array of possibilities there with those call flows. And, you know, you're not going to break anything. Definitely just um, try it and, and see how it works before you activate your you know, marketing campaign, you know, so that you know that your calls are going to be rooted properly. But, um, but go ahead and come in here to system settings, create your call flow, and then give it a test. And uh, if you have questions, you can reach me through the support center. Um, just click on the support center, send me an email, you can give us a call, and then join us here on the webinar. Um, we'll be back and um, next week with more.